27, the whole chapter. Now, Jacob lived in the land where his father had sojourned in the land of Canaan. These are the records of the generation of Jacob. Joseph, who when 17 years of age, was pasturing the flock with his brothers while he was still a youth, along with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zophah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought back a bad report about them to their father. And now Israel loved Jacob, Joseph, more than all his sons, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a bright, a, a coat of a, a many colors. And his brothers saw that his father loved him more than all his brothers, so they hated him and could not speak to him on friendly terms. And Joseph had a dream. When he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. And he said to them, Please listen to this dream which I had. For behold, we were buying sheaves in the fields, and lo, my sheaves rose up and also stood erect. And behold, your sheaves gathered round and bowed down to my sheep. Then his brother said to him, Are you actually going to reign over us, or are you... So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Now he had still another dream and related to his brothers and said, Lo, I have had a, still another dream. And behold, the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. He related to his father and to his brother. And the father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have had? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow ourselves down before you to the ground? And his brothers were jealous of him, and his father kept the saying in his mind. Then his brothers went to the pasture of the father, flock of Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are you not your brothers? Are you are you not your brothers pasturing the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And he said to, as he, and he said to them, I will go. Then he said to him, Go now and see up at the welfare of your brothers and the welfare of the flock. Bring word back to me. So he <coughs> sent him from the valley of Harbom, and to and he came to Shechem, and a man found him. Behold, he was wandering. <coughs> <coughs> In the field, and the man asked, What are you looking for? And he said, I am looking for my brothers. Please tell him, tell me where they are pasturing the flock. And the man said, the, They are moved from here, for I have heard them say, Let us go to Dotham. But Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dotham. When they said to him, Saw him from a distance, and behold, he came close to him, and they plotted against him to put him to death. They said to one another, Here comes the dreamer. Now then, come and let us kill him and throw him into the pit, and we will say, A wild beast devoured him. Then, he, then let us see what will come of his dreams. But Reuben heard of this and rescued him out of the, their hands and said, Let us not take his life. Reuben further, further said to him, Shed no blood, throw him into the pit in the wilderness, but do not lay hands on him, that he might rescue him out of the hands and restore him to his father. So, so it came about when Joseph reached his brothers, they stripped Joseph of his tunic of many colors, and it was on him. They took him and threw him into a pit, and the pit was empty, without wa any water in it. Then he saw, sat down, then they sat down to eat a meal. And as they raised their eyes, they looked, behold, a caravan of Ishmaelites, who was coming from Galilee, with their camels bearing aromatic gum and balm and myrrh, 
on their way to bring them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What profit is this for us to kill our brothers and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Israelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. Then, the, then some Midianite traders passed by, so they put him, pulled him up, and lifted Joseph out of the pit, and sold the Israelites for twenty shekels of silver. Thus they brought Joseph into Egypt. Now Reuben, were, now Reuben, he turned the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit. So he tore up his garments, and returned to his brothers, and said, The boy is not there. As for me, where am I to go? So they took Joseph's tunic and splattered male goat and dipped the, dipped the tunic in blood. They sent the tunic and brought it to his father. We have found this. Please examine it to see where whether it is your son's tunic or not. Then he examined it and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast had devoured him, and Joseph had surely been torn into pieces. So Jacob tore his clothes and put on sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. Then all the sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted, and he said, Surely I will go down to Shiro, the morning for my son. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold him in Egypt to Polyphar, Pharaoh's officer, that captain of his guard. Sometimes we have to use wisdom on how when God gives us a vision, it's best to get to have wisdom on who to tell and when to tell. But God can work what what um, his brother meant for evil, God turned out for his good because God used in that time of Pharaoh as a slave to humble Joseph, to, to train him up to be the, the ruler and the person he was, will be to save his brothers. I want you, but sometimes God used the hard times in our lives to make us humble and willingness to listen to God more. And to trust in God no matter what. I don't know about you, but I, in the last 56 years, I might have gone hungry a little bit, but I have never starved. God has never let me starve. Sometimes it might feel like it's coming to that point, but and He would never let me starve. So keep trusting God. Keep loving our, our neighbors as ourselves. No matter what, God has a plan for us. So keep looking up. Keep praying for our government. Keep praying for Mr. Obama. Our president, keep praying for our leaders. Keep praying that Christ will forgive us for all the stuff that, all the sinfulness that we have doing in our lives. And keep praying for our country.